Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today should be a fun one. We're gonna take a look at this really interesting product from hi -Fi it's the EF400 headphone amp, but it's more than that. And it's unusual, because normally I'd be doing a headphone amp on my desk, but we're in the big room, why? This is a ladder deck, it's really cool, and I've been using it just as a deck as well as a headphone amp. So anyway, sit back, relax, and we're gonna talk about this really interesting device. So the EF400 from Hyphenman is a really kind of interesting product. And we're in the big room because I used it different than what I think their intended purpose was. So it is a balanced headphone amp and DAC. But what makes it interesting is at $399, it is a full-on resistor ladder DAC. It uses the Hyphenman Himalaya ladder DAC technology, which they've won awards for. And again, it is a full-blown stepped resistor ladder DAC. And I think it makes it really compelling. So I was using it as a deck almost more than I was using it as a headphone amp. And as a headphone amp, especially with the HE400 SEs, it was very, very good. But I want to talk about it as a deck because they just lowered the price to $399. And you can't find another ladder deck at this performance anywhere near that price. So we're going to talk about it. I'm going to show you the front panel. I'm going to show you the back panel. We're going to open it up and look inside. And when I get back, we're going to talk about sound quality. So let's do the front panel first. It is really basic. It's a very simple device. This is a volume co control. Now it is not a preamp. This is just volume for headphone. So you've got XLR balance, you've got 4.4 millimeter balance, you've got 3.5 millimeter unbalanced and quarter inch unbalanced. And then this dial allows you to select between the gain modes, so high or low gain. And in each of those gain modes, you have an oversampling or non-oversampling mode. On the back, really very simple. We've got power connector, master power switch, only USB inputs, no spit off, single ended out, and balanced out. So it is a full balanced uh, DAC amp, headphone amp. So I used it mostly as a DAC, and that's why we're in the big room. And it's really, really interesting. So let's talk about R to R DACs versus chip based DACs and so forth. So the original DACs back in the day were multi bit. When Sony and Philips invented the CD player, they were using basically resistor ladders on a chip. It was much easier to do. You didn't need as many resistors and it was a little bit different. And it kind of in the early stages, they were only the, the very highly regarded and, and still you know, praised uh, Philips TDA 1541 DAC chip was a, a multi-bit DAC or a ladder, resistor ladder on a chip, but it was only 14 bits. And then Burr Brown came along and there were 16 bits. And then obviously Burr Brown did 20 bit. And I think they even did a 24 bit back in the day. Anyway, um, so the resistor ladder is a really interesting thing. And I hope you find the video interesting and you'd be willing to give me a like and a subscribe. What makes ladder DACs, resistor ladder DACs, and actually multi-bit too, but resistor ladder DACs really interesting is they can decode PCM digital signals without any oversampling. Let me explain. In a Delta Sigma DAC chip, what happens is, is that the signal is brought in at PCM, the ones and zeros, and it's upsampled. Most of them upsampled to 256 times. And then they can only process either three or six bits at a time. So there's a ton of high speed switching, obviously with the oversampling. They're processing it not in complete words or bits. They're processing it three bits at a time or six bits at a time. And then they have to apply the jitter reduction, noise shaping, the DSP. And you have to remove all of that oversampling signal, you have to filter the daylights out of it. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a second, why that and how it relates to what we do. So it has to be filtered a ton and then it's converted to an analog signal that's output. So in a multi-bit, it's done as a resistor. So you can re do the, the noise shaping much more generally. You don't have to oversample. So you don't need a ton of like filtering to eliminate that oversampling switching noise. But in a resistor ladder deck, what happens is, is rather than the oversampling, all of the signals, all the ones and zeros go through an FPGA, field programmable gate array. And that's where all the noise shaping is done, digital reduction and everything else. But again, it's not oversampled. And then the pure 
just ones and zeros once it's been processed, you know, with the noise shaping and eliminating all the jittery issues, are processed directly by the resistors, so there is no oversampling. You can choose oversampling mode, and the FPGA does the oversampling, and then the resistors do the conversion. So in a Delta Sigma, again, they're oversampling a ton. There are a few chips now, AKM does the 4499, 4191, and where they have the 4191 does all the oversampling, processing, noise shaping, DSP, all of that stuff, jitter reduction in combination with a good oscillator clock. And then the 4499 chip is strictly just does the D-to-A and that's a switch resistor chip. So the, the actual ladder DACs are kind of the purest way or the OG way of doing decoding, again, because you don't need to oversample. You can choose to, and the FPGA can handle it. That gives you that option there. So ladder DACs have some unique sonic characteristics that I think many, most Delta Sigma chips, except for a few, don't exhibit the characteristic at all. And, you know, we're going to talk about that, obviously. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to take it over, we're going to open it up, we're going to look inside, show you the power supply and all the other stuff. And when we come back, I'll tell you what I thought about its sound. So give me a minute to reconfigure and we'll be right back. Well, here we are looking at the inside of the EF400 from Hyphenman. Very large toroidal power supply, all wound with oxygen-free copper. This is the output stage here. Underneath these heat sinks live the output device. It is a class AB amp. It's good for 4.4 watts, according to the specifications. About 30,000 microfarads worth of capacitance. Here are the actual Himalaya ladder DAC chip arrangements. And I'll put in, insert some close-ups so you can actually see all of the resistors in there. Now, there is FPGA controlling this. Um, I don't know exactly how it is laid out. I don't know what's underneath here. I'm not going to take anything apart further than this, so I don't know. But it does sound really, really good, and it's unique in that, again, at a $400 price point, you're getting a full-on ladder deck. Anyway, so let's button this up. We're going to go back into the studio, and we'll talk about how it sounds. So as you can see from looking inside the uh, EF400, things built robust 30,000 microfarads worth of capacitance it's like a class it is a class a b amp for the headphone side they claim 4.4 watts i have no way of verifying that but it sounded very powerful with the he 400 se's um, as a headphone amp it was very good with the, the hi fi men headphones when i tried other headphones the imaging was a little weird um, and i thought and this is i think a characteristic bar to our decks the base is a little light. It's not like there isn't base. It just doesn't maybe dig as deep or doesn't have quite as much authority, although it's very agile and very and very good pace to it, you know, texture and everything else in the base. But I think Art Ardex, a little soft on the top end, a little light in the base, but just, and I'm talking, I'm splitting hairs here a little bit. So to assess this thing, I use this recording from Asa Ahat and David Arkenstone called Moments. And she is a violin, Ukrainian violinist. And of course, he's a new age musician, multi-instrumentalist and composer. And this is very much a David Arkenstone sounding album, but it's just beautifully recorded. It's lush. There's lots of, it's kind of very cinematic and very soundscapey kind of thing. And it's very enjoyable. And this did a really good job revealing all of that. There's great bass in it. There's good, the imaging is manufactured in the studio, but wherever they put the instruments, this found it, you know, placed them properly in space. And it was really just a really good listen. Um, nice, detailed, but very neutral and, and smoothish sound, especially in the uh, upper bass all the way through kind of to the upper mid-range, lower treble area. Very, very well detailed. To get a better idea of just kind of vocals and a little more rock and roll kind of sound, I use this recording from Crosby, Stills & Nash called Daylight Again. And the interesting thing about this is David Crosby is only on one song in the whole album called Delta. He was missing in action because of his addiction. So when you hear those wonderful harmonies in the songs, sometimes it was Art Garfunkel. Sometimes it was another vocalist. I can't think of his name, and when I, I'll find it, and I'll put it down here. When you listen to Southern Cross... It's, it is not, it is Stills, Nash, and this other fella doing the harmonies. There's no David Crosby, but it's beautifully recorded and their vocals are wonderful and their harmonies are wonderful. And, you know, all of the instruments are well presented. And again, very detailed, very, very natural sounding and, and very neutral sounding, very, very pleasant to listen to for sure through this. So to get a little bit more kind of a classical opera, uh, you know, orchestral sort of thing. I use this recording called Amor, and it's opera's greatest love songs. And everybody and their brother is on this one because it's a compilation. So you get Jose Carreras, and you get Placido Domingo, and you get Luciano Pavarotti, and you get uh, Kiri Takanawana. 
um, and some just amazing other female uh, artists. Just wonderful. If you're not into opera, give it a listen because it's all the famous love songs. It's the engaging stuff. It's approachable. It's not hours long like The Ring, you know, where you can't follow it. Yes, it's sung in Italian, but it is beautiful, and you could just appreciate the the skill of these of these singers and the vo the range of their voices is remarkable. And again, this did a really good job. So overall, sound character for this is little light in the bass, but very detailed, very articulate. Uh, not warm, not cool, kind of neutral, just very, very neutral throughout. Good, smooth presentation. There's no listening fatigue in it. All the way through the, from from the mid bass, lower, upper, upper bass through to really kind of lower treble, very smooth, very neutral, very natural. On the top end, at the very reaches, a little bit soft. Transients were well done. Decays were well represented. On the opera stuff, you could get a sense of the concert hall and things like that. So good imaging that way. And again, a lot of that is just the speakers too. But it did acquit it itself really well. And at $400 for a full-blown ladder back, I think that's really remarkable. Anyway, so that's the EF400 from Hyphaman. I liked it a lot. I really had a good time with it. And again, I, I played it as a DAC first. Good headphone amp for sure, but really amazing ladder DAC for 400 bucks. I think I've had all, I think I've said all I want to say about the Hyphaman EF400. And hopefully you liked the video and you give me a like and a subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, there's a thank you button at the bottom of the video window. There are also membership links in the pinned comment and in the video description. And in the video description will be an affiliate link to this. And if you're considering one, you know, I would very much appreciate it if you use the affiliate link. It does help support the channel. Um, there are also other affiliate links in there in the list of all my equipment and my playlists. And I've been adding new songs to the current playlists that are in there, volume one and volume two. Um, I promise I'll update it a little bit. I have to do a better job with the Cobuzz playlist um, for my friend, Mr. Blanchard, and also for Spotify, because a lot of folks use Spotify. So I promise I'm going to work on that. Um, comment. Let me know what you think. Are you interested in a ladder deck? Are you interested in exploring that sound signature? Because it is different than the chip-based decks, um, and it is unique, um, and it is very pleasant. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. Let me know your thoughts on headphones in general, headphone amps. Let me know your thoughts on your hi-fi system. Let, you, let me know your thoughts on music. Um, let's keep the comments non-political and polite. I'd appreciate that. Um, so like, subscribe, comment. Follow me on Instagram if you wish. I'm Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel, and it's now your job, your obligation, your duty to sit back, relax, and listen to some wonderful music, maybe on a great headphone amp and a good pair of headphones, or as a DAC in your system, and just relax and enjoy. I really appreciate the time you give me to watch my videos. Thank you so very much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Old Guy Hi-Fi